why are some countries as a culture more innovative than others? Right. Why do more inventions come from one part of the country relative to another? Now, would, why, you, say, would you say since the inception well, of America? So, so oh, it works ahead, on sorry. all levels, right? So you can have entire countries feeling this way. Mm -hmm. You can have regions within a country. We have Silicon Valley. Right. Stuff coming out of there, other places don't, even within our country, are not matching what the innovations that have emerged from Silicon Valley over right. recent decades. It's an innovative community. An innovative they come community. together to do just that. To do just that. And so... But don't you think that's a uniquely American thing? I mean, I would say... What? That what is? The, the, the fact... Now, I don't know this empirically. Yeah. But my perception, and it could be because I'm American and mm -hmm. we're very Americentric in this country. Mm -hmm. USA. USA. <laughs> Come on, stay with me. USA. US. Okay. So... What, do we get a zillion gold medals in the Olympics? <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> and they're still cheering. Uh, and they're USA. Still cheering. USA. <laughs> It's but like, damn. I would think, and it's my perception, that we innovate more than any nation in the world. I generally, I think in post-war, post-Second World War, right. the 20th century, and a little bit in this century, I think that's true, yes. So the question is, can we maintain it? Oh, by the way, I don't know if they can see out the front window, the, the amber-colored building up there, that is a famous high school. The uh, Stuyvesant High School. Stuyvesant. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a high school of science and math, and they're the sort of the regional competitors to the Bronx, Bronx High School science. of Science. Yeah, did, did you go to Bronx I Science? I went to Bronx High School. Nice. Right. It's famous Bronx Science. The Bronx Science has eight Nobel laureates counted among its graduates. Sweet. Seven in physics, and one I think in chemistry, and it's it's a it's a point of pride. I think. That is. And then you say, well, how do you duplicate this in other cities? And how do you... And uh, now, we talk about innovation a right. moment ago. Right. The country of Spain okay. has eight Nobel Prizes. The whole country? The whole country. Right. And Bronx Science. Bronx Science has eight has, among its graduates. Has eight among... And the right. whole country is Spain. Spain. So we have one high school with more Nobel laureates than an entire country. Correct. Correct. Now, of course... Wait, one no, second. No, my issue, one yeah. second. Did you hear that? USA! <laughs> USA! All right, I'm sorry. I had to do it. <laughs> no. So my issue here is, uh -huh. uh, obviously, there are many, many countries that have never won any Nobel Prizes. Okay. So picking countries that don't have as many Nobel Prizes as my high school is not the point here. The point is, I pick Spain because Spain spent at least a century, I would count it as two centuries, of its history mm -hmm. as explorers. That's true. Explorers. And That's if right. they weren't exploring, they were paying I was to say, somebody else. They're financing exploration. They're financing exploration. Right. As, uh, as, as, as we know from Christopher Columbus's but story. Christopher Columbus. Right. And so, and so wait, wait, we got a pan, um, we're going to Canal, yeah. Street. About to pass Canal Street up ahead. The famous uh, Canal famous Street. Famous Canal Street. Which used to have a tunnel. Back when the Dutch were here. Right. In fact, Canal Street connects to the Holland Tunnel. Ah. Right. <laughs> Those Dutch. <laughs> Those Dutch. You know, it's like dogs like peeing on every tree. <laughs> the Dutch have left their, left their mark, Put their mark like, on everything. everywhere. Canal, they, in, in the Netherlands, most of that country is below sea level. Right. So after global warming rises the, the oceans, they'll be fine. They just build more dikes. Build more dikes. This is what they do. Mm -hmm. This is like how they do it. So wait a minute, I'm back to Spain. Why did you pick oh, Spain? Oh, because they have a legacy of exploration and discovery. So I want to hold them accountable oh. for a cultural attitude that pervaded oh, their land. I got you. you. See what I'm saying? You hear that, Spain? You just got served. <laughs> okay. You can't go to Uzbekistan and say, I got more Nobel Prizes than you, unless there's some history there. Right. Or some, or, or, or Biafra, right. wh wherever, or whatever it's called today. You can't, that's not the right kind of comparison. Right. So I go to, to I sent, I sent, I was in Spain this past summer, and I went up to some of the Spaniards, and I said, what gives? And so they say, well, yeah, things are different. People are thinking they're in survival mode, economically, right. rather than thriving mode, um, where the, which gives you the free freedom, time, freedom to uh, freedom of thought, freedom to take when your you, thought to places where you have the luxury exactly. which of is, imagining a future that you have the power to create. Absolutely, you know, and that works the same way in the art world too. 
So if you were wealthy, you could pursue art. Mm. You know, so everybody thinks like. But isn't art everywhere, all over the world? Yeah, everybody that's it a is. Bit of art. It is, and I think that's more because you have an individualistic approach to art, and mm -hmm. so it really is formed in the mind. You don't have to follow any rules. I mean, right? Astrophysics, right. Oh, you got to follow some rules. Yeah, yeah. The, the, but the, the artist, universe is the ultimate judge, jury, right. and executioner. There you go. Right. The universe is Judge Dredd. <laughs> I am the law. So. <laughs> <laughs>